is an event planner. From meetings to weddings, conferences to sporting competitions, and expositions to political fundraisers, event planners are individuals or teams responsible for establishing dates, goals, objectives, themes, venues, staffing, marketing, decor, transportation, food and beverage, entertainment, and on-site logistics and management. As an event planner, you will work for a company, nonprofit, or government entity, or run your own event planning and management consulting firm. Whether you choose to specialize, focusing on meeting or wedding planning exclusively, for example, or provide services for a wide range of event types, you will need training, experience, and a comprehensive understanding of the art and science of bringing people together for a common purpose. The event management industry is highly competitive. In the United States, as of 2010, the $7 billion event management industry was comprised of about 3,500 companies, the top 50 of which grossed approximately 45% of the industry's revenues. However, the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics indicates that the industry will grow 16% in the next decade and employ approximately 66,000 meeting and convention planners by 2018. By 2005, the wedding planning industry was about 15,000 people strong, although Bureau of Labor Statistics does not compile detailed stats about this industry sector, they do combine data on wedding and funeral professions and indicate steady growth there as well. As an event planner, there are a number of objectives you must incorporate in each event. The first objective is to identify the event's primary goal and any secondary goals. For example, the primary goal for a company building a hybrid vehicle might be to introduce it to as many people as possible by showing and demonstrating it for a period of time at the main entrance of major science and industry museums nationwide. A second goal for this touring exhibition might be a green event initiative in which the sales mission is augmented by demonstrating a green car while using a paperless planning and management system. Once the overall goal or goals of the event itself are established, the event planner works with the client to develop the overall vision for the event. The event vision for this hybrid car tour includes, but is not limited to, choosing event dates and venues where other exhibits are drawing large crowds and the chance of conflicting events or inclement weather limiting attendance are unlikely. Determining how much time will be required for transporting the vehicle from venue to venue what the display will look like, should it be futuristic or evoke an environmentally friendly and healthy feeling through use of greenery and running water. What will the presentation be? Will there be a canned presentation running on a video screen or will the vehicle be attended by knowledgeable models who will simply chat with the visitors and answer their questions? Once the overall objectives of the event are targeted and fleshed out, the event planner will nail down the specifics of the event process and implementation. For the hybrid car tour or any other event, it is the event planner's responsibility to make sure every detail is included in the plan and process. At the very least, every event planner for every event is responsible for the plan. The plan, a written document with timelines and checklists, relates all the steps that need to be taken to the vision of the event. It may be many years long for very large events, and it serves as a blueprint for the event. The budget. Perhaps the most critical element of the plan is the budget. It establishes how much can be spent and drives all of the event planning decisions. The location and venue. A well-chosen location and venue will enhance the experience of attendees and reflect the goals and vision of the event. Conversely, a poorly chosen location can ruin an event. The agenda. Even simple events need a schedule of activities and responsibilities during the event, whether this includes a roster of speakers and topics or the staff scheduling at an exhibit booth. The contracts. Always, always in writing, contracts must be negotiated and signed by the planner and any and all venue and service providers. The permits and insurance. Without these in place, authorities can close down an event without any notice at any time. The staff. Both paid and volunteer staff are critical to a good event and should include specialists in financials, legalities, risk management, and other key areas. The speakers, models, entertainment, etc. These people need to be identified and contracted with well in advance. They also need regular reminders of their commitment and special services on site. The marketing. From invitations to securing press coverage, marketing the event is the responsibility of the planner. 
the transportation. If the happening is a destination event, it is the responsibility of the planner to help make the travel easy and comfortable. Transfers from location to location during the event are also part of the planning. The on-site logistics. Once the planner and management team arrive at a venue, all the facets of the plan must come together seamlessly in order to give the attendees the best possible experience. The overall success of the event. At the end of the day, it is the event planner's responsibility to make each event a success in the eyes of the client and all the attendees. There are dozens of qualities an event planner and manager must have in equal measure. Depending on the event, some qualities may be called upon more than ever. But you must be a good communicator. Your vendors, staff, client, and attendees all rely on you to keep communication positive, effective, and open. Have superb organizational skills. You'll have dozens of balls to juggle for every event. Figuring out how to keep them all in the air at the same time is critical. Be an excellent motivator and manager of people. You need your team because you can't do it alone. Make sure you are capable of managing the team members effectively and compassionately. Have passion for your profession. If you don't love what you do, it will show in the results. Be flexible. Even the best laid plans can get destroyed in moments. Expect it and be prepared to change boats mid-rapids. Have great stamina. You may be on your feet for 16 hours a day during the event and just before it. Event planning is not for the faint of heart. Be a time management guru. Everybody will rely on you to set the example of getting the most done in the least time. Have a level head. Don't lose your cool and have confidence in your ability to think clearly even in the most trying times. Be creative and innovative. Don't fall back on any conventions in your planning unless they are perfect for your event. Bring fresh new ideas and enhance enhancements to every detail. Maintain grace under fire. Keep your friends close and your enemies closer by communicating clearly, calmly, and concisely at all times. Command respect. Do good work with great style. Be a multitasker. Remember, you'll have dozens of balls in the air at all times. Be a team player. This cannot be emphasized enough. You cannot do it alone. Have an eye for and commitment to detail. Detail is what separates OK events from fantastic events. Possess extensive industry expertise. Before you start an event plan, do your research about the industry your client is in. Know your client, the attendee base, the current trends, etc. Be capable of thinking on your feet while never letting them see you sweat. There are a number of ethical issues that arise when you plan an event. During the planning stages, you, must, you may be romanced by destination managers. People who are in the business of selling event venues and space encourage site selection visits or familiarization, fam trips, by putting you up for free and perhaps whining and dining you. While this can be great fun and very useful, if you really aren't planning to use a certain venue, it is unethical to take a fam trip to it. Often vendors will offer event planners incentives like gifts or front row tickets to another event. This is not an unethical practice necessarily. Showing appreciation for a business associate by gifting them is fine as long as it is within reason and the gift is not used to garner favor. It is up to you, the event planner, to draw an ethical line in the sand where incentives are involved. The same consideration should be given to rebates and kickbacks. Yes, receiving room block rebates can really help your budget, but don't choose a hotel, for example, that really isn't ideal for the event's purpose just because they offer a rebate incentive program. The Bureau of Labor Statistics 2010 figures indicate meeting and convention planners average between $35,000 and $58,000 a year. As of 2008, specific salary breakdowns by client industries include Management, Scientific, and Technical Consulting Services, $49,600. Business, Professional, Labor, Political, and Similar Organizations, $47,670. Other Support Services, $44,290. Colleges, Universities, and Professional Schools, $41,860. Traveler Accommodation, $41,470. Industries like wedding planning don't publish exact salary data because some planners only do one or more, two events a year and may only make $5,000, while others do dozens and make over $250,000. 
Bureau of Labor Statistics additionally indicate that event planners with bachelor's degrees and event management certifications were viewed more favorably by employers. Furthermore, the opportunities for freelance planners and event planning companies are increasing as businesses try to keep the overhead of in-house event planning down. With education, experience, certification, and the qualities discussed in this presentation, your career as an event planner is readily available.